Welcome to the eighth installment of the Overdrive Liberty Series. My name is Randy Grider. I'm editor of Overdrive Magazine, and I'll be your host tonight. It's a great privilege, a great privilege to introduce our guest for tonight's Celebrity Series, Jennifer Brennan. Jennifer is one of the six stars of the A&D Network show Shipping Wars, which started its second season on August the 7th. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to take a moment and thank our sponsor, Dello, for making this series possible. And to our audience, thank you for participating with us tonight. And make sure you've clicked the play button on the right side of the celebrity chat page to participate in the live chat. When you ask questions, give us your first name and your city where you're at currently, and so we can give you a shout out uh, to Jennifer. And Jennifer, uh, welcome. Uh, thank, you for us tonight. thank you for having me. Yeah, so you are at home currently, is that right? Yes, yes sir, I am. Just trying to relax before I go back on the road. <laughs> okay, and now has the show totally wrapped up filming for the second season? Ab actually, it hasn't. I actually have another two-week run I'm going on, um, starting in a co actually a couple of weeks. So um, I'm just trying to relax when I can and recoup and do the things I need to do, like family things I need to do before I hit the road again. So how many episodes have y'all filmed so far? Um, so far, I don't, I don't know. We're, we have to do 26 episodes, so it just depends, um, you know, who makes a good episode. Um, you know, if we go on a two-week run, it tries. We try to do two episodes per run, but it just depends on the people we deliver to, or if the if the item's interesting or not. You know, like for example, I moved that pair, that African gray recently, and he he didn't even talk, which I thought he was going to, and um, I'm surprised that made an episode. <laughs> oh, okay, so you don't, you never know what's going to be on the show and what's not. Is there something from every? load with the film crews with you or it uh, they get into the show or it's just you're surprised when it comes out yourself um i i know when when they we start doing green screens and um you know stuff stuff like that when what's going to make the uh, episode but i don't know no i can i can go out there you know and bust my tail and and then I'm like, oh, it didn't even make an episode, and I'll be gone for a month, which, you know, most truckers are, but it's, it's you know, it's wear and tear on your body. I mean, but I I tough it out. Right. Um, Jennifer, we talked, you know, a couple of months, well, it's not been that long, but it's just right after you had started them in the second season, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of tell everybody here that um, might not have seen our story, kind of how you got started uh, with the shipping, and I understand you were doing it a little bit before the show started or sometime before then, but kind of take us through, one, how you got into uh, doing uh, transporting and how you ended up on the show. Well, honestly, I I got into it by um, my family rodeos. My cousin's actually second in the world in cutting. She's sitting there right now, and so it would help. And I was working for the state and doing liquor promotions and all that, and I just had to stop working um, I was having a lot of stomach issues and yada yada yada. Well, when I decided I wanted to figure out something else to do, I was like, "There's this is a way I can go see the country and get paid." The, and the producer found me, and I was like, a real skeptical about it because it was a TV show and a, it's like hidden cameras. <laughs> I don't know about that, but so I signed the papers, and here I am. And I, I've I'm very blessed for where it's taken me and what I've seen and I mean I've run into some very interesting people um, but I've made a lot of friends on the road as well. Now, were you, you had what, about a half a season last year, that wasn't a full slate, right, the first year? No, it wasn't a full slate. I think, you know, the network wanted to, um, you know, order a few episodes and kind of see, you know, how the, the um, you know, the public liked it. and. They seem to like it. I just think some people don't understand that we actually do have additional loads on our on our trucks and trailers that they think we're not trying to make that's not the whole we're not ever trying to make truckers look bad because I have a lot of respect for the truckers. Um, we have more items, but it's only a twenty two minute show with commercials, so we can't show every item that we have on our trailer or truck. Um, so we do make good money. You know, Mark, driving a big rig, obviously makes more money than I would because he can haul bigger items. But what the whole idea of the show is, is they want to see, like, how me personally or how Roy or Mark or Jarrett would get a situation and how they're going to problem solve. You know, that's the whole thing. We're, we're not trying to ever, you know, 
make truckers look bad. That's not the intention of the show. I wouldn't do it. That's not my intention as well. Um, so I feel like I like, I, I, I want people to see it that way. Okay. Now, I don't know that where this person's from, but they're wanting to know what advice you would give to someone that wants to start out on your ship. Uh, doing what you guys are doing. Yeah, I mean, you just got to make sure, you, you know, you're DOT certified and you've got good insurance. Um, and start off doing, honestly, just building your um, your ratings. Just do something local if you can. I mean, I wouldn't go anywhere far. Get enough loads. Plan your route out good because the gas prices are high. And they're telling if you have, you know, a, make sure you have a good truck or a good trailer because you can run into, and people do not realize, you run into so many problems. I mean, I... I'm talking about blowout. When I when I ran out of gas, I know people laugh at that. There's not many diesel stations in the desert. So you've got to make sure you plan and get good GPSs that tell you, you know, where all the diesel stations are, you know, all the I mean there's a lot to it that people don't realize. Right. Um Baby Hall's out of it looks like it's Williston, Florida is wanting to know does and I think you kinda went over this, but does it, do the producers pre-select loads you guys bid on? Um, they they want it to make it to make it interesting. They do some of them, correct? Yes, they do. Um, I mean, so if like, they here's an interested load you guys should see. Yes, that kind because of deal. honestly, you know, I do want to challenge myself and do bigger items, but I can't physically do what Mark does. I can't. I mean. And I won't get out there and get dirty. I, I move bulls. I move livestock. I'm not afraid. I'm a girl that's not afraid to get her hands dirty. Like, you look at Chris, the new couple on the show. He wears gloves pumping gas. And I'm like, and Mark doesn't put his little jumpsuit on. And I think it's funny because I get dirtier and work harder than those guys. And, yes, being a female in this industry, I'm constantly, constantly having to prove myself. But I get it done. Now, Jennifer, you told me before that you grew up very much up a tomboy. Yes. Uh, you spent a lot of your uh, summers in Alabama, I think, and mm -hmm. on a farm. Is that right? Yes, sir. My aunt, um, they have a big, huge ranch, 2,000 acres outside of Montgomery, Alabama, and since the time I could walk, I was playing in the creeks and just my diaper. <laughs> and my daddy, I think, wanted boys. So I grew up riding dirt bikes. My very first motorcycle had training wheels on it. I rode horses. I, I hunt. I'm not a city girl by any means. I My ideal of a, a good afternoon is a cold beer and, and, and having going fishing or hunting, you know, just something low-key. I'm very, very laid back. And also because of your, your, your dealing with animals growing up on a farm, you seem, you seem to end up with a lot of animal <laughs> on the show. Is that, is that because you're going to go the extra mile to try to get an animal to haul because you like them so much, or is it just worked out that way? Well, it's worked out that way. I haven't gotten as many as I like this season, but... Um, I think it's because I can't see Mark or Roy, you know, honestly, I can't see them really caring for the animals. And no, you don't make as much money with livestock, um, but I would prefer to do that because I love animals so much. And I'm also getting paid to, like I said, go see Colorado or Utah or Arizona. Like being from Texas, I don't. I don't see mountains like that, so that's not work to me. I I just want to go climb the mountains, but I don't have these animals. It's it's, it's awesome. And it's led to some interesting moments on the show for you, right? With dealing with animals. Uh, yeah. Yes. In the past. Yes, it's very interesting, and you know, I'm trying not to get killed with these bulls, and um, you know, the the season finale is going to be pretty good, I believe. Roy and I actually do. Uh, we might be doing something together, so you'll have to tune in. Well, Ted, so far, what's been probably the, the, the most um, unique load you've had? Mm, most unique load? I would say, oh, heck. Well, I don't know. It, when I say unique or different to me, when I showed up, I just did that kudo, that stuffed kudo. I um, show up, and like I said, I... I hunt, so I'm thinking in the picture this looks like a taxidermy. When they say stuff, I'm thinking it's taxidermy, and I show up, and it's a stuffed animal. Like, 
but it looks like it's got sturdy legs and everything and I was stressing out about building a crate for it and I was like are you kidding me they didn't show it my family drove three hours my uncle drove three hours to help me build this thing and I was like I'm so sorry like I can, I can move it with one arm, so I deliver it, long story short, I deliver it, and these people had like 20 kids, not really, but they had like six kids, just pregnant again, they wanted to open a um, stuffed animal museum, I thought that was the weirdest thing ever, <laughs> so I ran into some interesting people on the road. I imagine. Uh, we've got somebody from your home state here uh, from Canyon Lake, Texas, Wayne McNair. Uh, a couple of questions. One, does it take a lot of money to get started? And I'm, I, I guess he's talking with the type of rigs that, you, that most of you guys drive. And also, he wants to know, do they film um, in Austin where you live? We are actually, well, uh, first question, it does, to honest, well, with me, the DOT does not cost a lot, but the insurance costs a lot per month. Um, and of course, gas prices. So that's why I say plan your loads carefully and make sure you're legal in everything you do. Um, do your log books, stop the way stations. Um, those are all very important because you, when you get audited, they can, you know, slap you with the, all those those fines. But yes, actually, I live in Austin. The actually the production company is based out of Austin. So all my camera guys, I've had the same camera guys since day one. Everyone is based out of Austin. We do film a little bit in Austin, but most of it is we're on the. I wish we filmed closer to Austin, but most of it's on the road. Yeah, when you were speaking of your camera guys. Tell us what it was like the first week, first month of filming last year when you had these people following you around everywhere you went. Oh my goodness it was so uncomfortable and it's kind of dangerous because you have a camera a huge camera that's blocking you know my passenger mirror and I'm trying to swat at him to tell him to put it down you know and it just and then like when something's going wrong like the littlest thing when it comes to like a tie down something you know I know or like putting a halter on an animal something that's easy it's like somebody standing over you typing you know when you start messing up and you can really type it's like that you start messing up because someone's following you around so now he's like my brother and I start acting goofy on myself and so now it but like I said it was very uncomfortable and I was like I'm gonna look like an idiot and it just took a long time to get used to it took, it took me I had to tr start trusting him which I do now so, are uh, there with you in the truck, there, uh, when you're on the road, they're with you almost all the time except when you're sleeping, is that right? Correct. Me, personally, I do ask for a producer or my PA or my camera guy to ride with me all times. Unless I get mad at them, I'll kick them out of the truck. I've done that a couple of times. But the only reason I do that is because I personally like someone to talk to. Um, but I've gotten pretty pretty heated like I said I'm a type A personality and I tell it like it is and I you know I get some producers that think they can talk to me a certain way and I, I pulled off them side of the road and kicked them out of my truck I would <laughs> you just pull the mic on mic and everything or you're I I've turned it off I'm not quite as bad as Roy but I mean I can stand my like I, I can stand my ground with Roy he's actually pretty impressed when uh he can talk down to me and I stand right back up to him so I think that's why Roy has so much respect for me when we're not on camera we're actually pretty good friends if somebody had asked and they were anonymous on there does Roy drive you crazy and I guess you kind of went into that but are, are, is it you guys are probably the biggest clash or is there other personalities on there that that don't match as well, or kind of give us the kind of give us the rundown of the cast. Okay, well, Roy and I, honestly, on the show, like the only thing I don't like, and I know this is how Roy really is. He doesn't do very well with you know authority or like people like public. And I'm I'm friendly. I could talk to anybody, and I don't like when he puts people that he's just blatantly rude to people, and I will call him out on it. And I, it took him a long time to come around and warm up to me. Well, I'm not going to lie, when we, we work together, we, I get frustrated with him because I can't handle sometimes the negativity. I like Mark. He's a little bit of a diva. <laughs> like I said, he puts his suit on, he's, but he knows his, knows his stuff. The new couple, Chris and Robbie, um, I don't quite know them, but uh, I call him them. Uh, I don't, I'm not really close with them, but like I said, he pumps his gas with the gloves. 
I, I don't get it because I grew up with a manly man. I'm used to like being around that. Like I said, I get my hands dirty. And Jarrett is just a good old country boy, bless his heart. What you see is what you get on the show. It's like with me, what you see, like pretty much all of us, what all you see on the show, none of that's made up. Like when I say like we really get a flat tire, we run out of gas, that I really got kicked by a camel. Uh, trust me, I, <laughs> it hurt. <laughs> So, basically what you're telling us is they just let it roll and they cut and show what they want to, but it's yep. all the stuff you're telling us, none of it's scripted as far as what we're seeing. Uh, it's not scripted, no. And um, I'm, I can't, I'm not an actress, but uh, no, it's not scripted, and yes, things happen, and we run into, you know, like... From point A to point B, depending on who we who we run into, no, they're rolling constantly. We have we're mic'd from I'm I'm mic'd and I ride with these guys 15 hours a day. So I mean, to, you know, if I'm if somebody starts talking to me and they they start rolling, it doesn't matter if I'm asking for directions or whatever. But no, none of it's scripted. Me run me getting lost because the GPS is and can't find the you know out in the country or my, I have no service. Oh no, they run they roll with that and they have a heyday with it. <laughs> Jennifer, so far, if you can share with us, what's probably been the most embarrassing moment on the show for you? Because you told me, you know, you've gotten nervous before when you first get used to it. Is there any moment that just stands out where you're going, I can't believe I did that, or that was just too funny, or? Um, the most, well, there's two. I can't believe, well, that's really me. It's when I peed in the trailer, but, um, I was in New York City, and I drank Red Bull constantly, energy drinks to stay awake, and especially in the morning, and. There was no bathroom, and I was like, I like seriously, I could care less right now. And I didn't even know they were going to film that, but I didn't care. But I would say the most embarrassing thing is when, and they didn't show this, of course, but when my producer tells me to stop, we had to stop to get food and all that for us on the road. I stopped on an incline last season with the gooseneck, and my truck, you know, it got stuck into park, the gear shift, and. I've never really, it's the weight, the weight of the trailer was, you know, pushing on, I think it was the transmission, I should know this, but um, it was, that was really humiliating, and I will say for the record, not, they can't help me, but they kind of felt bad for me a little bit, and they were, none of them knew the answer, so I can say, me being a female, you know, I handled it by myself, I got some guy to help me, actually for free, even though I, I tipped him, but um, yeah, that was pretty embarrassing, I can say that, because it made me look like I didn't know what I was doing, you know. <laughs> hey, we've got another attendee that wants to know, do you, get the, does the DOT give you guys any break because of the show? If they see you, roll up, you got the cameras? Yeah. Nope, we actually, they actually put the, um, the cameras down because when we stop at a, um, if we stop at a way station, you know, I've gotten pulled over because the scales are wrong, you know, um, and I've gone in there and no, I, I say might, but no, they don't give us any breaks at all. Alright, um, somebody else wants to know if you, if you had a load going to West Virginia, and what's your favorite state to get a load from? Um, yes, I've gone through West Virginia, it's absolutely beautiful, and, um, I would say my favorite state so far would be, it's hard because I love anything with the mountains, but I would say definitely Utah was breathtaking. Utah. Okay. Uh, they want to know if you're, if you're leased to a company or you have your own authority. I have my own authority. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, take us, uh, I know you told me that uh, when you're not on the road, you have a lot of outdoor, uh, outdoor activities, including mm -hmm. hunt, hunting. And tell us a little bit about that. Um, yes, I have a ranch in the hill country, um, Mason, Texas, and we have, you know, about maybe 300 acres. I don't know, it's low fence. I hunt, I rifle and bow hunt. Um, I hunt hog, deer, dove, and turkey, and I don't shoot just to kill. Um, I eat everything, actually, we eat everything that we, um, we shoot, and we process it ourselves, and I also work for nonprofit, a nonprofit group, and it's called NWTF, or Ducks Unlimited National Wildlife Turkey Federation, and I raise money for this organization. It gives back to either the children, um, or it goes back to um, 
to re uh, preserve the wetlands. It, it just goes back and raises money for them, and um, that's just kind of me. And, I, and, of course, I love the gym. Those are my hobbies. <laughs> okay. Um, now, as far as will we see anything, any bad clips of you, possibly this season, uh, showing uh, your hunting activities, or is that even came up with the show? I don't know if they're going to spread out and show what you guys do when you're not on the road. Well, they do try and do character pieces. They haven't, they've got me horseback riding at my aunt's ranch. Um, they don't have hunting. I don't know why they, the executives wanted to nix that because um, they didn't want to show, I, I don't know why, but they didn't want to show that. So it's, I don't know, but they do show me, I've never seen, y'all are going to laugh. I hit, I think it was. Pennsylvania, the big uh, blizzard that came through, I actually had to drive in the middle of it. I've never seen so much snow being from Texas, and I got out on the side of the road and had all these 18 wheelers honking at me. It was funny, like, but laughing at me because I'm playing in the snow, and I think they're going to use that as a character piece because I was like a child at Christmas. Um, this coming season, what, I know you probably can't give away too much because you know the shows that's what hasn't aired but uh, can you give us any hints on some things we might be able to see coming up um well like i said the season finale <laughs> it's pretty dangerous pretty wild it's probably the scariest thing i've ever done in my entire life um and i will say it involves roy and i so um that that will be interesting and i try and annoy him honestly the whole time we're riding together um and I try and venture out and do uh, things other than livestock that, you know, most, like I said, most guys or truckers that do this have done this for years. Probably think this is so easy, but things that are really, you know, very, very, very heavy for me. I mean, it's challenging for me, but I do get it done. And like I said, I don't get help. Um, I, I do it all myself. I can't get help. They're not allowed to help me. A couple of questions about... That's being a celebrity now. One, well, actually, before we get that, I want to know. Of course, I guess Shipping Wars is your favorite show now. But what other reality shows do you watch? Um, I watch. I don't know if it's reality. I'm honestly, I'm really never home to watch TV. But if I do, it's um, I watch the hunting, um, the Outdoor Channel, or I watch college football when that's on. I'm a big college football fan. Um, when you pull for. Are you a Texas fan? Um, I'm a Texas fan, but I'm also I grew up Alabama, so as long as they're not playing each other, um, you know that's fine. But if when they play each other, I'm going for Texas. But my my mom and I and dad were they they still fight. They say SEC is way better than the Big Twelve, so it's kind of a a little battle in the house. <laughs> now, when you're out, people recognize you. What is that like for you, Jennifer? I mean, you're you're pretty new to the to the celebrity arena, I guess. Is that is it embarrassing? Is it overwhelming? Or kind of uh, give us your thoughts on that. Honestly, I'm really humble. Like, I can walk in somewhere, and I don't think anyone's going to recognize me because I'm, you know, I don't, to, to be honest with you, it, it hasn't affected me, and I don't think I'm a celebrity, to be honest with you. I just feel like it's just, I'm blessed that I'm getting this opportunity. But if people do ask me for a picture, it's honestly, it's more flattering to me than it probably is to them because it makes my day. It makes, because if I can make someone laugh and just take like their stress away just for even five minutes of their night with all, everything that's going on, you know, in people's lives, I feel like I've done a good job. And I don't think I'm funny, but I get it all the time. So. But you do get recognized. I got recognized, yes, yes, and I got recognized yesterday when I was, I went to this little boutique my mom had been telling me about, and they, nobody said hi to me, and I was, I was really upset, and I was like, okay, well, good morning to y'all, and she goes, how do I know you? I saw you on Shipping Wars, and I was, I, I got, honestly, everyone turned around, and I did get a little embarrassed, because I'm humble, my mama raised me, you know, I'm not, once you let something get to your head, it's over, you know? So, um, I wasn't, I, my mom was raised on a dairy farm. Um, just, I, I'm very blessed. I can, that's all I can say. Okay. Hey, Danny Hall of, uh, Clueston, I think this is Clueston, Florida. Uh, he will, he's going to know how do y'all guys get paid on the show? Is it mostly cash? Um, cat, we get paid cash, or I do like the square on my car, my, either my iPad or my phone. Um, 
And of course, in one episode, as you all probably saw last season, it, one of the cards was declined. I tried to whisper that to him. So he writes me a check, and people are like, oh, she's an idiot. She took a check. I went straight, excuse me, I went straight to the bank, his bank, and I got paid. But yes, I get mostly cash. Um, that's what I prefer. And Jennifer, you're not doing this just when the show's filming. You're doing this all the time. Can you just give us a ballpark figure of, with your setup, your type of rig? What, what's a good week? What's what's a, an average or a good week for you? Um, Depending on the loads I have, the average I would say anywhere from like maybe 2000 to $3,000. Depending on like, you know, like I said, if you do non-livestock to, I mean, that's me. That's, that's me personally because things can get, me being a female can get really dangerous. I just... I just ran into a pretty scary situation that, thank God, I didn't uh, go do. So um, a guy wanted me to ship a monkey for him. Come to find out, we, you know, that, that they, the show got, got interested into it. And, you know, they're like, oh, cool. And I was like, all right, let's do this. Well, he ended up, there was no monkey. So I'm just glad that I didn't show up to pick this monkey up. And, you know, I mean, it can be very dangerous, you know, especially for a female. I'm sure all of us, you know, get a little weary of that but um it you know i make sure i do a lot of research before i go and bid on anything about how many weeks do you work i mean your your okay. average over the road truckers out there anywhere from you know probably 48 to 50, 50 uh, weeks out of the year what about you because i know you do the fundraising stuff so how much of your uh gear is devoted to the oh the oh my goodness um I would say pretty much like 70 to 80 percent because I do that. I try and take a little bit of time off, of course, for like holiday, for holidays is huge in my family. Hunting, of course, um, and then of course the the nonprofit work. So I'm really never home ever, and it sucks because I miss my dogs. <laughs> no, okay. Uh Jennifer, I know we're, we're almost out of time. I know you're making some, uh, starting to make some appearances. You're going to be in Dallas this coming yes. week mm -hmm. at the Great American Trucking Show. And can you tell us where you'll be and, and what time's there? Yes, I'll be in Dallas, Texas at the GATS um, show. And it, I will be there Friday and Saturday. Um, you ship, I'll be at you ship, and I'm going to stop by y'all's booth as well. So uh, hopefully I'll get to meet some of you guys out there. All right, and for any fans, it'll, you say you'll be there in the afternoon. You'll be signing autographs, taking pictures. Is yes. That kind of what you'll... Yes, I will. I'll be I'll be there all afternoon, and you know I'll stay as long as I need to. All right. Any other uh, any other appearances uh, coming up that's been announced, or do you uh, you just kind of I whatever, you're told you're going to be somewhere? I've got a couple coming up, so. Um, Cross my fingers. I think I've got a couple at Gander Mountains coming up. Um, you know, maybe a couple at, um, might be going back to Mexico to promote it for a &E Latin America. Um, so we'll just keep our fingers crossed. I think the Gander Mountain ones, I've got two of those coming up. I just don't know the dates quite yet. I've got to look at my calendar again. So. Okay. If anybody wants to reach you, you've got a Facebook page, is that right? I so do. You can join your, as a fan? Yes, um, it's Jennifer Brennan. Just you just type it in, you'll see. Um, you know, it's my fan page, and then my Twitter is Jen J E N N underscore Bren B R E N N N, and I have a web page. And if you want to, I do answer all of my emails. By the way, they're on my fan page. I personally do. I will send out um, autograph pictures for free. Um, I I answer them all. Like I said, my web page is thejenniferbrennan.com. Okay. Jennifer, I uh, appreciate it again. Thank you for talking thank with us you. tonight. Thank you. Thank you to the audience for sending us your questions. You wanted to say bye to everybody, I think. Yes, thank um, you. <laughs> sorry. Uh, we'd also like to take one more moment to thank our sponsor, Dello, for making this series possible. And we'd like to invite all of you to come back next month on September the 17th when we'll be interviewing award-winning songwriter and over-the-road trucker, Gary Gentry. Good night, everyone, and thanks again.